Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The Federal Reserve might have to cut rates all the way to zero or negative especially based on what Goldman Sachs just posted. This is wild. Now, just a heads up, Lauren's driving right now, so I'm in the passenger seat and we're gonna cover this, but this is wild. So this topic right now has to do with a temporary labor being a leading indicator for what's coming. And this is a really interesting one because if right now you think, yay, the yield curve uninverted, don't be so excited. When the yield curve steepens, that is when the number goes bigger and more positive, we're usually in a more painful environment. Look at what the yield curve did all the way back in last summer when we had three months of pain, you know, July, August, September, three months of pain, we had three months of yield curve going up. Well, now it's breaking through positive, and that's kind of like what you saw in 07 and leading into other recessions where when you spike up from where we are now, positive like six basis points up to 50, it starts hurting really fast. Now, we'll talk about how to prepare for this, but this is a very interesting piece from Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs here suggests that temporary employment historically serves as a leading indicator for broader labor market performance with the lead time a little bit elongated this cycle, potentially due to labor hoarding. However, the data they're collecting suggests that non-farm employment will worsen over the next several quarters. Usually, temporary employment skyrocket, well, I shouldn't say skyrocket, temporary employment's, employment plummets to a negative year-over-year -year growth rate only in recession. That happened in 1991, and we only went positive again after the recession ended. It happened in 2001, and temporary employment year over year plummeted negative, and we only went positive again after the recession was over. It happened in 2008, and it only went positive again after the recession was over. And we have now been negative since the end of 2022 which suggests that maybe because of the AI euphoria and that investment, that CapEx investment, we may have delayed the inevitable here, but usually we don't go positive again with temporary employment until we come out of a recession. In fact, you can pop over if you want. You can pull it up yourself to the St. Louis Federal Reserve, uh, the FRED, we like to say, uh, and you can take a peek. Wow, Tesla stock was down 8.45 today. That's wild. Q's down 3%. That's wild. But anyway, uh, you could take a peek uh, at specifically this chart or one of the charts if you want to see them. Uh, and it's, uh, I can't seem to pull it up on my iPad right now, but that's okay. Uh, but I was going to tell you exactly what phrase to look for. Oh, here it is. All employees, temporary help services. All employees, temporary help services. Look at that chart and you can see it only goes negative uh, in recessions. And uh, it's been trending down quite a little bit here since the end of 22, but it is usually a leading indicator by about three to four quarters per Goldman Sachs of a recession coming. Now, why could this potentially mean that rates have to go down to zero or this crazy talk negative? Well, because Goldman Sachs goes on to say it's not just negative operating leverage, declining revenues, declining earnings revisions that are all leading to additional macro uncertainty right now and potentially hiring freezes and then just labor hoarding your longer term employees while getting rid of your temporary employees to sort of try to boost earnings and increase cash flow. But consider this. Generative AI is increasingly being considered a potential medium to longer term threat to staffing volumes, both temporary and permanent. And this is a really interesting thought because now you want to think about this. What happens if we don't get a second wave of inflation? And the Federal Reserve's task is not worrying about inflation, but it's rather only worrying about jobs. This could happen because supply chains became so darn loose, it's entirely possible that we don't have inflation even if we go back to quantitative easing, which sounds crazy, I know, but it's possible. But we'll skip the inflation argument here for a moment and let's just focus on labor for a moment. What happens if we go through a labor recession over the next year here, maybe even two years, probably next year, you know, maybe Q1, Q4, three, somewhere in that range of next year, you go through a labor-driven recession. Even coming out of that recession, you may never hire back as many employees as you have seen hired in the post-COVID economy, which means there are going to be a lot of people 
for a very long time who were permanently out of work. Uh, and, of course, some of those discouraged workers or long-term unemployed don't uh, show up in the unemployment readings. But in the near term, we could see the unemployment rate skyrocket. And that will drive the Federal Reserve to drive, frankly, rates down to zero or potentially even negative. Now, you might wonder, wait, 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 negative. That's stupid. That hasn't been done before. Well, it actually has been done before. It's been done in Germany, and it happened in 2019 right before the pandemic. In fact, if you go back on my channel, I warned about the potential for coming negative rates in the long-term future, assuming, obviously, I mean, back then, nobody was thinking there was going to be a big pandemic, but absent the pandemic, we were trending towards negative rates, which is crazy because it started happening in Europe. Think about what negative rates mean for a moment. They mean that, hey, now, when you have money sitting in a money market or in a savings account and you're not either investing it or deploying it, you are getting back less money after a year than you put in. So you put a thousand bucks in and then you end up with $995. That's crazy. That's like the opposite of what happens when you buy the courses on building your wealth, like the one that's expiring tonight. Oh, well, actually, all the courses have a coupon code expiring tonight. Those go up in value over time, which means you have to pay more over time. So consider joining since you have lifetime access. May as well join sooner rather than later. Anyway, email us at staff at meetkevin.com if you have questions, but that's over at meetkevin.com. We do have an expiring coupon tonight. Uh, we did have an option that doubled this morning, which is freaking sick. So uh, good trading day. Uh, but uh, thank you, treasuries. Anyway, that was great. You can watch my prior video to see more about that one. But anyway, think about this for a moment. You put a thousand bucks into a money market. What if you get nine hundred ninety-five dollars back? Oopsies. That's not great. After a year, you're expecting to get a thousand and five dollars back. You know your principal back and five dollars more back. Well, not if you have negative yields. And now, why would that happen? Well, that would happen in an environment where potentially. Well, we, I mean, first things first, you'd cut all the way down to zero. Then you'd turn on the money printer and you try to stimulate demand uh, for people hiring. But if people don't hire because they could do more with workers using AI or they can do more with workers who are, uh, uh, you know, basically just fully replaced by artificial intelligence. Well, then you're in an environment where oopsie doopsie, you might just never end up at the same levels of employment as where you are now. And that sucks. So the Federal Reserve might not react to that though. The Federal Reserve might end up in a position where they say, uh, no, uh, people are gonna hire people again, of course. Let's just keep rolling the money printer. Yes, there's always the risk that that ends up driving inflation, but I think the odds of driving a second wave of inflation are relatively low because of how loose supply chains have gotten. And actually, this is a crazy thing. Usually one of the big drivers of inflation is labor. When labor gets really tight, it causes inflation. Wages go up and then businesses try to pass through those wages. So beyond just expanding service capabilities through AI or not, or manufacturing capabilities or lower freight costs or whatever, beyond that, you actually think from a, wait a minute, if labor is less necessary, then labor costs don't go up anymore every year. You end up getting labor deflation. Labor deflation means disinflation or deflation across the board. And then what do you end up with? Well, then you end up with a poopy doopy situation where you might end up with negative yields. And so this is a big warning here from Goldman Sachs suggesting that temporary staff industry, industry trends have historically served as a leading indicator for broader term labor market performance uh, with the current lead time a little bit elongated because of the labor hoarding we've seen. But when that labor hoarding goes away, it's over. It's a poopy doopy. <sighs> anyway. Hey, do you want to go to Westlake so you can charge since this Tesla supercharger station is full? Dude, this is crazy. This place is never full. This place is never full. And even though this place is never full for the superchargers, was absolutely crazy is there's not even a single Ford or Rivian or other car here. It's all Teslas. So what happens when they start opening this crap up to other companies? Forget getting a charge. Damn it, Tesla. You know, I was having a debate with somebody on, uh, on X. Somebody on X is like, uh, oh, you know, uh, the future of FSD uh, is going to be all Tesla. Every car in the future will use Tesla, just like Windows inside. And I'm like, Windows Vista? I tried putting that. The only thing Windows Vista would load into was a shredder. 
That's the only thing my Windows Vista disk would load into. It sucked. So, uh, but anyway, uh, no, no. Companies realize the way to make profit is to white label the software. You end up using an NVIDIA drive, uh, like the Orin or Thor platform, and you end up using your own white labeled service. Hey, hi. hold on a second. Hey, how you doing? They're all overheating like crazy. They're overheating? Yeah, that's like the third one I've tried. Oh. They, it, just stick it out. It, it, it charges wow. eventually, but they keep shutting off, shutting off, shutting off. So. That's crazy. Yeah, let's go to the Westlake one. Well, Thank you for the heads up. It might be better. It might, maybe. Uh, oh, your your car's overheating. No, no, the the charger. charger. The charger. No, so That's crazy. Okay, well let's try here. That we'll try a little bit. We're we're down at like ten percent. So. Oh, it's taking like three times as long with the heat. Oh, it's cycling. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Everybody's complaining about. It. Sorry, Nate. thank you for that heads up. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, everybody at Tesla community, they're so nice. Everybody's so nice, but that's not good. Can you back into that spot and then go ahead and plug us in? Uh, and then uh, after you plug us in, let's see if it happens to us. But, yeah, I'll just make a quick Tesla note here. You know, uh, software is – look, you know a lot of people white label wine, right? What they do is they, they go to a winery, and they're like, hey, your wine tastes great. That, that's how they can wi write off their wine tasting visits as well. Yeah, yeah, your wine tastes great. I want to put my label on it. So you'll make like a Meet Kevin wine, and it's actually, you know, I don't know, some Charles River wine or whatever, right? And you just slap your label on it. They don't care because they're selling more, you know, barrels of wine. And for you, you get your label on wine. You're like, yes, I have my own wine brand. I'm a wine connoisseur. It's, it's the same thing. You just go out there and push the little triangle button on it, and it'll pop open. Uh, it, it's, um, it's the same thing with Tesla, in my opinion, because what's going to end up happening is you're going to have companies that say, well, why, why do I want to use Tesla? First of all, Tesla can't even get this crap working in a Cybertruck. So why am I going to use Tesla if I could just use the NVIDIA platform Put my own labels on it, Mercedes, Neo, or whatever. It doesn't even have to be NVIDIA. It could be uh, Mobileye or whomever, right? Uh, and and they put their own branding on it. Then they don't have to pay anyone else for it. Uh, and boom, they got their own software stack that they can profit off of. You know, even on a prior earnings call at Tesla, they said, hey, it's going to be, even if, even if we signed an agreement today for licensing FSD, it would take three years to show up in the cars. Too late, man. That takes way too freaking long. So, uh, no, no, no. I think uh, I think there's a lot of uh, looniness uh, in Hopium on FSD. Personally, I think Tesla's a great vehicle. What they really ought to do is not license all these freaking chargers to third parties. What they ought to freaking do is sell more cars. So include the FSD for free. Sell more freaking vehicles. Mass produce. Let's get to 10 million vehicles of production. Let's expand rather than trying to squeeze every penny out of the existings. And, uh, and and let's get the network effects of Tesla going. Before we have a car accident here, my goodness, this lot's turning into a crazy craziness over here. Anyway, don't forget to plug your charger or plug your car in at night. We were getting our car washed last night, so I didn't plug it in like a little dummy the rare time I got to drive. Oh, well, I get to enjoy the supercharger experience. Man, I wish I could just stop at a gas station and get myself a monster and be gone. Lauren doesn't want to be on camera, but she's so cool today. Oh, you know what her face says? Her face right now, it's saying there's an expiring coupon code linked down below. Make sure to take advantage of it before the price goes up. It's going up at 11.59 tonight. We finally got the software working to where it actually expires at 11.59 p.m. California time. On the dot, baby. You pay once, you're in forever. Anyway, if you like my perspective, don't just come for trade alerts. Don't just come for real estate analysis or macro analysis. Uh, but come to talk, come to chill, and uh, we'd love to see you there. Meetkevin.com. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want a mastermind, go to meetkevin.com slash mastermind. We got, I think, still, I think we got like one seat left. We're down to one seat. Uh, I, j I saw another sale go through, so I think we got one seat left at the mastermind in October. Uh, and then uh, in-person small group entrepreneurs. It's great. Uh, and then if you are looking for personalized financial advice, consulting, 
see what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what you could be doing better to maximize your long-term wealth building journey. You could be in VOO, that's okay. We could still consult with you. Uh, get you into real estate, get you into real wealth building. Go to stockhack.com. We start the service October 1st. We'd love to see you there. Thanks so much. Meetkevin.com for the courses. Bye.